Hello and welcome to Capacity TV. My name is Saf Malik, reporter at Capacity Media. We're here live at ITW 2022 and I'm delighted to be joined by Paul Abfolter, Head of Global Wholesale at Telstra. Paul, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Saf. We heard some breaking news from Telstra quite recently uh, regarding your Essex Next cable. Um, it's the first direct project from Australia to uh, the US uh, and we'd just like to hear more about the project and what it means for the future. Yeah, look, it's really important for Australian US capacity, but not only that, also for capacity to the South Pacific Islands, a big area of focus for us over the last few years. Um, so three branching units to three of the South Pacific Islands, as well as that uh, Australia-US piece. Um, really important from a latency point of view. It's the first straight shot, as you mentioned, from Australia to the US, so it's going to be the fastest cable by some ways. And for us, you know, we're the biggest investor on that route. We've got four other paths, so this gives us like a massive amount of path diversity now with uh, the fully owned Telstra Endeavour, Southern Cross North and South. We have some Hawiki as well, and now Southern Cross Next. And Telstra has a new incoming CEO in Vicky Brady. Uh, we'd like to have more about what that means for the company going forward. Yeah, it's a big uh, transition after many years with Andy Penn, I'd say. The company over the last three years in particular has really focused on sort of consolidation and on cultural transformation. Vicky's really taking it over at a period of time where the focus is now moving much more on growth. So what that means for us in, a, in an international context is really continuing to invest to maintain our leadership as the number one subsea operator in Asia Pacific, as well as uh, a big focus on other projects throughout the Pacific as well, not least of all $1.8 billion acquisition of Digicel Pacific, which has uh, got announced last October. Um, they're the um, you know, number one or number two provider in six uh, uh, mobile provider in six uh, islands in the South Pacific. Um, also a big focus on terrestrial investment in Australia, so billion dollar project uh, connecting all the cities in Australia, um, really the, the largest sort of cable build project for Telstra in Australia for, for some time. So how important is mergers and acquisitions, uh, and you mentioned the Digicel deal, um, going forward? Going forward. Oh, look, really important for us from a, a growth perspective. Uh, Digicel was a really complicated uh, transaction. Um, actually, the largest acquisition Telstra's ever done. Um, but we're very experienced in doing that in an international context. Uh, the uh, PacNet acquisition we did in 2015, which I was closely involved in, was really, really important for us, really helped to consolidate our leadership position for subsea in Asia and was a real springboard for the sort of next phase of growth for the international business. Growth for the international business. Uh, and looking at your wholesale remit, uh, what are your strategic priorities for 2023? Well, look, uh, continuing to invest to maintain that subsea leadership is really, really important. Biggest area of focus there is probably Trans-Pacific. Um, you know, three different cable projects there that we're working on. Huge amount of work and a lot of geopolitical and other complexity with those. Um, so that's priority number one. I think we're continuing to invest terrestrially in places like Philippines. Big announcement about that we're making tomorrow. Um, uh, really unlocking the C2C -C cable and getting that into Manila much more easily than what we have in the past. Um, as well as um, places like Taiwan, uh, Japan, Korea as well from a terrestrial investment point of view. We're also investing heavily in satellite. Um, we're a big provider of uh, ground station managed services throughout the region, so not just in Australia, but increasingly now in places like PNG, uh, Philippines, Taiwan, and we're looking at other markets as well. That's really important given that sort of, for us in terms of supporting that growth of, of LEO and GEO satellites throughout the region, super important for the industry as a whole, and really big, uh, a factor on improving the, the productivity and the connectivity in some of these smaller markets. Oh, look, I think uh, we've built up our position there over many, many years. I think they're really important um, sort of new emerging hubs of connectivity in the region. Philippines in particular is just, you know, growing at a, a rapid rate of knots at the moment. Huge amount of cables going in there. We're investing more and more. I think we're the owner of the most fibre pairs into uh, the Philippines at the moment um, and have interest in, in two landing stations there. Really, really important and own a lot of backhaul there as well you know, really important market for us moving forward and for the whole industry. Um, for, other, for, for, for reasons such as space and power issues, geopolitical issues, um, some of the more traditional hubs are getting a little more constrained. So places like Philippines and Taiwan have really grown dramatically over the last few years. Paul, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate the time. <laughs>